Here we are, we're live. Hey. Hello, <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone around. I don't think there is. Do my hair. Do your hair. Yeah, smarten up a bit. Smarten up a bit. It's the Mod Extra. <laughs> Fighting Fantasy Stream, folks. I know you're all very excited. Been waiting for this to come along. Um, we're doing good guns through the numbers. I've got the success boards here. So this is uh, books 1 through 12. <laughs> in which we defeated two of the books and lost ten of them. That took us up to Space Assassin, but we're now into our second batch of 12. We did Freeway Fighter last month, and then tonight we have the Temple of Terror. But we were successful against the Freeway Fighter. Yeah, we were. Yeah. So I've got this really skanky second-hand copy. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jocelyn. I bet that's got a smell to it. Oh. No, it's not too bad, but they've, someone's been eating biscuits or something. Whoever had it prior, there's like crumbs <laughs> and shit in it. It's, uh, it's seen better days. It's seen better days, and it's got those very classically yellowy pages, look. Mm. Um, so, yeah, tonight is the Temple of Terror. Looks like it's got a very scary kind of s snake man. Snake man. Thing. Well, you're quite welcome, Justin. You're quite welcome to come hang out while you file some paperwork. Um... And this snake man appears to have like a collection of shields and skeletons in their little crypt. Well, presumably in the temple. Skeleton warriors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a little bit of small print caveat on tonight. Um, I have my family are out and they are due to return at some point in the future. Um, so so hopefully. we're hope hopefully, yeah. Um, so the hope is that we will get through the book in time but if i get the text message saying they're on the train i'll have a sort of 20 to 30 minute time limit wherever we're up Oof. to uh, i think the main upshot of it will be we'll just have to be a, um a little bit strict about taxi backsies if there's any <laughs> <laughs> if there's any tonight uh, but as usual my man first thing we need to do is get you a character rolled up i've had a no quick problem. peek through the instructions and it is standard Routine, uh, no extra rules or special shenanigans. Okay. It's skill, stamina, and luck as per. Uh, skill is 1d6 plus 6. Skill, stamina, luck. Right. Uh, look, I made a dice roller today. Oh, okay. This little thing. thing oh! <laughs> came with some macaroons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so which side is going to be the number side? I don't know. I think I'll just take him out. <laughs> because one <laughs> keeps landing on three, regardless of how much I shake it. Uh, right, so 1d6 for skill. Yeah, plus six. I'll use my lucky Ministry of Dice dice. Of course. And it does me proud. On a six. Oh, what? We need to sort you a dice camera out. I've hey. even got the box for it on the overlay. Six. Right. Stamina. Two. Uh, two right. D6 plus 12. Beautiful ministry dice dice. That is not as good. That is six. Ooh. What's that? 12 plus right. six, 18. 18, yeah. And, and then your luck is a single. Single dice plus six. <laughs> as the opposite end of the spectrum, that is a one. Oof. Well, let's hope you don't have to test your luck very often. Uh, you've right. got 10 meals. Yum, yum, yum. <clears throat> you have a sword, some leather armor, and a little satchel. Satchel. Cool. And that's it. That's it. Standard fantasy adventure um, set up there. No laser guns, no special rules, no machine guns to mount on the top of your car. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll take that. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing else. Pretty just straight up. We're going to the Temple of Terror. So without further ado, I'll get the uh, get the background section read, shall I? I'll just have a drink of my prime energy drink. Oh, where did you get that? <laughs> Six hundred quid on eBay. <laughs> Sponsored by Prime. There you go. No nah, local shop at it. Wow. Hello. You should have bought as much as you could. Scout that shit. It's, uh, it's a longer story to it than that, but 
we didn't get that many. Okay. <laughs> Was it l- limit one per customer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mental. That whole Prime thing is just mental. Right. Insane. Temple of Terror, the background. Perhaps it was because he was born during a full moon with wolves howling around his mother's forest hut that Malbordus was na- Malbordus's nature was evil. Perhaps it was something more sinister than that. Bum, bum, bum. But it is certain that after his mother abandoned him, Malbordus grew up in the Darkwood forests in the care of the Dark Side Elves. He was taught the elves' wicked ways and also discovered powers of his own. He could make plants wither and die simply by snapping his fingers, and he could make animals obey him with his piercing gaze. The elves urged him on and helped him develop his powers so that they could teach him the arcane and evil magic of the ancient elf lords. Magic so vile and powerful that it kills unworthy users. In pursuit of such evil powers, Malbordus grew into manhood, In order to prove to the elves that he was ready to receive the Elf Lord's knowledge, he first had to pass a test. He was ordered to journey south to the Desert of Skulls to find the lost city of Vatos. In the city were hidden five dragon artefacts, which he would have to find and collect. A simple incantation would bring the dragons to life to serve the forces of evil. Oh, are we playing a bad guy in this one? Sounds like it. Malbordus would then instruct them to fly him back to Darkwood Forest, where a massive army would be assembling. He would receive the ancient powers and lead the hordes of chaos across Alansia in an unstoppable wave of death and destruction. Oh, I like we're in Alansia again. It was only by a stroke of luck that these terrible plans were discovered. On the edge of Darkwood Forest lived a strange old wizard named Yastromo. Something of an eccentric... He lived alone in his tower, practising simple magic and communicating with animals and birds. He was always willing to sell small magical items so that he could afford to have brought him deli- so that he could afford to have brought to him delicious cakes from all over Alantia. His sweet tooth was the cause of his only link with the outside world, as he rarely left his tower. It was therefore much to everyone's surprise that he came huffing and puffing into the village of Stonebridge. What could possibly have forced old Yaztromo to venture through Darkwood Forest to Stonebridge? All the dwarves who lived there were eager to find out, and a message was sent to Gillibran, their kin. After the rigours of a recent quest, you are resting in Stonebridge, enjoying the merry company of the dwarves. Ah, so you're going to have to stop Malbordus. I I like the idea of being him better. Being the bad guy, yeah, that would have been a nice twist, wouldn't it? Your wounds are almost healed and the local blacksmith has honed the blade of your sword as only a dwarf can. Resting on a porch with your feet up on the railing, you are intrigued by the commotion in front of you in the village square. Followed by a throng of inquisitive dwarves, Yastromo climbs the stone steps of Gillibrand's house and is warmly greeted at the top by the king. The crowd falls silent when Gillibrand raises his hand and Yastromo turns to speak. You slide out of your chair and join the crowd to hear what the wizard has to say. With a glum expression, his face almost as long as his beard, Yastromo relates the bad news concerning Malbordus. The dwarfs look up apprehensively, as though they're expecting the five dragons to descend upon them at that very moment. He calls on them to show courage, saying, Friends, look on the bright side. At least we are warned of our impending doom. Thanks to my pet crow, who overheard the conversation between the Dark Elves and Malbordus. What we must do now is find somebody who can reach the Lost City before Malbordus and destroy the dragon artefacts. See, all all the pieces falling into place now. I know a man for this job. We need a fearless young warrior who is willing to risk his life and limb to save us all. Is there one among you who would volunteer? On my way, mate. On my way. Each dwarf looks around to see if another has dared to accept the challenge. Standing there, watching the worried dwarves, you realise that there is only one thing you can do. With a wry smile on your face, you raise your arm in the air and offer your services. (laughs) Is that your wry smile? (laughs) Hello, one-man crowd, welcome. (laughs) Preferably someone with high skill stat. (laughs) Me. Absolutely, he did. He raised... The jammy beggar over here rolled a six on his skill. 
Uh, where was I up to? Uh, the Astromo sees you and says, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Never mind. You look like the kind of person we want. Make way for our brave volunteer. We must leave for my tower immediately. Come along. Let's be off. You have a lot to learn, but I cannot teach you much until we are safely through the Darkwood Forest and inside my laboratory. Laboratory? But wizards yeah. didn't have laboratories. Well, this one does. Okay. You hardly have time to cram your belongings into your backpack before the impatient wizard leads you out of Stonebridge towards his tower on the southern edge of Darkwood Forest. Now turn over. Uh, one man crowd. Glad I could catch one. How'd the last one go? Uh, freeway fighter. Yes, it was freeway fighter. Freeway and fighter. We made we made it to the end on freeway fighter. We managed to defeat the book in that instance. Yeah, we did. And a, a little bit, bit of, help really. of my magic gas can. A little bit, yeah. We had to. We, yeah. Don't don't be too um, congratulatory there, one man crowd. We we did have a taxi back seat. Yeah, <laughs> the car broke through. down a few times because, yeah, the the, the powers that be decided to give me a car that only lasted like two minutes before it ran out of petrol in a dystopian wasteland where I'm going to get petrol. <laughs> like, what's that all about? What is that all about? But we made it to the end by. Making some house rules around the petrol. <laughs> <laughs> right then, section one. For an old man, Yastromo is surprisingly sprightly. You cross Red River and the ploughed fields beyond and soon reach the edge of the forest. Yastromo still doesn't stop. He takes a narrow path leading into the dark wall of trees. The light fades. Branches and knotted roots obstruct the twisting path and make the walk very tiring. You ask Yastromo why he seems unconcerned at the possibility of being attacked by forest monsters. He chuckles and tells you that his magic is well known and respected by all the creatures for miles around. None would dare challenge Yastromo. Why doesn't he go and sort out Mount Bull? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might just like, like live in his loft or something. Wait for it all to blow over. <laughs> Lock the door, order a pint and wait for it all to blow over. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> After spending a peaceful night in the forest, you reach Yastromo's tower by mid-morning the next day. You follow him up the spiral staircase to a large room at the top of the tower. Shelves, cupboards and cabinets line the walls and are all filled with bottles, jars, books, boxes and all manner of strange artefacts. Yastromo slumps down into his old oak chair, by now looking quite tired from the long journey. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a fragile pair of gold-rimmed spectacles. After placing them on his nose, he peers at you over the top of them, and you feel quite unnerved by his piercing gaze. Oh, piercing. Look at that. Finally, he says, anybody who would hope to defeat Malbordus must certainly know a little magic. You look bright enough to learn some, but I don't think you have time right. to absorb the ten spells I would like to teach you. By the way, I would like, <sighs> I would like you to know how privileged you are to learn my magic. But a crisis is a crisis. Now, let's get on with it. Which spells shall I teach you? You have the choice of open door, creature sleep, magic arrow, language, read symbols, light fire, light fire. Sorry, that's two separate ones. Light, comma, fire. Jump, detect trap, and create water. To make your choice, turn to 34. Right. How many do I get? Uh, choose any of the following spells. Four. As four. soon as you've learned four, turn to 180. All right, then give me the list again. So open, open door. door, which presumably opens the door. Creature sleep. Yeah. Magic arrow. Language. Read symbols. Light. Fire. Jump. Detect trap. And create water. Create yeah, food and water. Right, four of them. Right, so... Jocelyn reckons you should go for creature sleep. Yeah, I was thinking creature sleep. Right, so we start with creature sleep then. Turn to 58. Yeah. Do, 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 do. 58... Uh, Yastromo explains that his creature sleep spell will put to sleep any humanoid creature. Right. Thank you. 
He tells you the incantation necessary to cast the spell and says it hardly drains your energy at all, merely by one stamina point when you use it. Uh, and then return to 34. To make your next choice. Cool. Well, now this, these, as, as we do, I think Open Door has got to be on the list. <laughs> Okie dokie. Turn to 12. Yaz Trobo explains that his open door spell will open any locked door. He tells you that the he tells you the incantation necessary to cast the spell and says it will not drain your energy too much. Only two stamina points will be lost. Two points. Eh? Two for that one. Um, Definitely thought light and fire were one spell to set a fire. <laughs> yeah, light fire. Yeah. <laughs> so it's two stamina, isn't it? I'll make a note of that for your um, door one. Okay, uh, so next up, please. Read symbols, please. Read symbols. That's quite far back in the book. 391. There you go. That's the winning one. Uh, yeah, as Tromo explains that his read symbol spell will allow the user to read any runes or magic symbols. Whoa. Shit me, man. That was a surprise. <laughs> he, he tells you the incantation necessary to cast the spell. Uh, one stamina point for that one. All right. Uh, uh, then we've got... So we've got magic arrow, language, light, fire, jump, detect trap, or create water. Chat. What am I going for? Best one to answer. Light. One man crowd says light. Light, light it is. Turn to two, two, three on that one. Two, two, three. Yes, Tromo explains that his light spell will illuminate any room, cavern, or area, whether its darkness is natural or magic. Mm, that's intriguing. Yeah. Uh, two stamina points for light. And now that you've learnt four, I shall turn to 180. Let's get going. Let's get rocking on our quest. Here we are. Evil dark elf. The old wizard looks at you solemnly and says, every minute is vital. You must begin your journey immediately. Without doubt, Malbordus will learn of your mission to thwart him and may send an assassin or two after you. My crow will lead you as far as Catfish River. From there, you can either take a river vessel to Port Blacksand and then a sailing ship south or journey overland to the Desert of Skulls. A grim task is ahead of you, but our thoughts will be with you. Yaz Tromo leads you back down the spiral staircase and out into the open. Suddenly, he gives a shrill whistle and a large crow immediately swoops down from the top of the tower and settles on his shoulder. Now, Crow, guide our friend as far as Catfish River and make sure you keep a good lookout. The last thing we want is an ambush on our very own doorstep. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll hear that. You shake hands with the Astromo and reassure him that you will destroy the dragons of Vatos before Malbordus can attain his evil goal. I'm confident. You're a proper wizard, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> He smiles and hands you a pouch containing 25 gold pieces. Ooh! Let's just leg hey. it. This has Tromo, guys. Like, he's give you four spells, he's give you some money. And a bird. <laughs> uh, the crow squawks and flies off. You hurry after it, turning just once to wave goodbye to the old Yaz Tromo. Oh, Walking yes, through man. the tall grasses, a shiver runs down your spine at the thought of Malbordus' assassins coming after you. You travel steadily south only deviating twice to circumvent some danger spotted by the crow. Three hours later, you arrive at the banks of Catfish River, at a point where it is spanned by a rope bridge. An old barge is moored to a jetty beneath the bridge, and you see several rough-looking characters unloading sacks. If you wish to cross the bridge, turn to 23, or if you'd like to buy some passage to Port Blacksand, turn to 213. I think I'd like to buy a passage, please. Okay. 2.13 it is. Why walk when you can go by private yacht? That's what I've always said. And that's what I'll that, stick to. Absolutely. 
Okay, after watching the crow fly back towards Yastromo's tower, you follow the path to the jetty and walk confidently up to the first crewman you come to. What, mate? You ask to, you ask to talk to the captain. He eyes you suspiciously and after a long pause says, follow me. He leads you onto the barge and knocks hesitantly on one of the cabin doors. A gruff voice shouts, Enter! That's my gruff voice. Nice. The crewman opens the door and gestures at you to enter the cabin. You stride into the cabin and see a stocky man dressed in clothes that have seen better times. He asks you your business and you tell him you wish to buy your passage to Port Black Sand. Anybody who would pay to get to the city of thieves must be either desperate or insane, he says laughing. It will cost you five gold pieces. Uh, you can pay the five gold pieces or you can choose to haggle. I just pay him the five gold pieces. I've got 25, but there's it's still 20 more than I started with. He's loaded, isn't it? Loaded. Just splashing the cash. I'm Tyrion Lannister. I always pay my debts. <laughs> Have it. 67. The captain smiles as you hand him the gold and tells you that he hopes you will enjoy the river journey. You shake hands and walk out of the cabin. Turn to 102. All right. So far, so oh, good. Easy, this. Jocelyn thought you should have haggled. Oh, British, please. <laughs> the barge is neither very large nor designed for paying passengers, but you find a coil of thick rope on which to lie. After mm, your long comfy. walk, you are soon sound asleep, and you do not wake until one of the crew taps you on the shoulder to say that Port Black Sand is in sight. You stand up and watch the sinister-looking city grow larger as you approach. Ten minutes later, you pass under a great arch to enter the city walls. The crew soon have the barge moored, obeying the frantic orders of the captain, who is obviously eager to load up his waiting cargo and leave before nightfall. You bid them all farewell and set about looking for a place to stay the night. The shadows start to lengthen as you walk through the narrow streets and alleyways. Suddenly, an old man in tattered clothes jumps out of a doorway and says, ah. Looking for a bed, stranger? I know a good place that offers a room, a soup and bread for only one gold piece. If you're interested, follow me. Wasn't it Wasn't it in the City of Thieves last time we were in the City of Thieves in Port Black Sand that some old geezer offered you a bed and dinner and it went horribly wrong? No, no I ended up like, oh, no, going back to nice. his house. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on then. Go on. One gold piece then. Three, three, two. It's like I beef in it when you have the little people outside like, <laughs> trying to get, get, get you into their bars. I, got, I paid one gold piece, but I've got this voucher for some <laughs> Chambler Main, please. <laughs> the old man hobbles ahead of you along the street and stops in front of a dilapidated house. He knocks loudly on the door three times with his stick. Suddenly, the door flies open and two rough-looking men run out brandishing cudgels. You hardly have time to draw your sword before you are set upon by the robbers. Fight them one at a time. No mind if I do. So robber one is a skill eight, stamina seven. And robber two is skill seven, stamina seven. Right. Fight on. Fight them one at a time. We'll go for first oh. robber, I suppose, then. Well, you choose, oh. don't you? Isn't there a small oh. thing about? Bastard. Uh, yeah, let's do the eight seven one first. Let's get him out of the way. Okie dokie then. I've got. Is it two? Is it two? I've forgotten. Yeah, two dice. Add your skill. Add your skill. All right. All right here we go then. First roll. Oh, I'm gonna stab that old bastard as well. Finished. Right. That's uh, six plus eight. I'm on fourteen. I'm on twenty two, bitches. All right. It's two, isn't it? Two damage. Yeah. Two damage. Right. I'm down to five. Uh, roll number two. Oh, that's not good. Uh, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Sixteen. Six, Sixteen. Oh, it's a tie. All right, then. Roll number three. Oh, my word. I've just rolled two ones. The old twenty ones. So that's pretty confident. Yeah, anyone around in chat want to make a roll? Give us an exclamation D12. Make the next roll on behalf of the robber. Oh. <laughs> you didn't press shift, one man crowd. <laughs> uh, 
Exclamation D12. I've got 23. So There you go. Ooh, 18. It's a good roll. What man crowd gave us a good roll, but uh, it wasn't Not enough. Right, enough. the rubber's down to one life. Not with these Ministry of Dice dice. Oh, I spoke too soon. Six plus eight, 14. Uh, 12 plus three is 15. Still does the job. Oh, rubber number one is defeated. On to rubber number two. Uh, give us a roll, chat, for the second robber's first oh, attack. Oh, oh another bad D12. one. 15. Oh, it's a strong roll there by a one-man crowd. Six, nine, 16. Oh, take two points. Right, less and less of those shitty rolls. Right, boom. Okay, decent. 18. Nine plus seven is 16 again. Boom. That's better. Hang on, let me just note up my damage. 21. Oof. Yeah, that's fine. Down to three. Do another roll. <clears throat> Two, Nine. Five. Sixteen. Nineteen. I got a D6 right over my face. You right, the robber's only got one life left. Uh, give us a roll, chat. Excavation D12. Nineteen. Ooh, eight plus, yeah, that's it. Done. Killed the oh. robber. Right, where's that old man with my gold piece? He's Hang on. Right. It. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got to turn to 89 if you win. You look around, but the old man is nowhere to be seen. Ah! The book knew. The book was onto you. He knew where you were going with this. <laughs> Rummaging quickly through the robber's pockets, you find a small brass telescope and three silver buttons. Telescope. Bit of brass, yeah. Three times silver buttons. I'm literally undressing him. After packing away your finds, you set off again in search of a place to stay. Three, seven, nine. Well, off to an auspicious start in the city of thieves. Well, city of thieves by name, city Indeed. of thieves by nature. Indeed. Looking up, you see a road sign indicating you are in Clog Street. You, you walk Oops. down it all the way until it ends at a T-junction where it meets the Harbour Street, which runs parallel to the shore. You look out to sea and watch the setting sun sink slowly beneath the horizon. Darkness envelops you and you wonder where to go next. At the end of the street to your left, there are lights shining in windows and you can just hear the sound of singing and laughter. Harbour Street, <laughs> the heart of the robbery district. <laughs> You decide to head towards the lights and soon find yourself outside the Black Lobster Tavern. Nice. You walk through the doorway into a smoke-filled room where seedy-looking characters sit at crowded tables, laughing, joking, and singing. You walk straight up to the barman and ask if he has a room for rent. Luckily, there is one available. Excellent. You pay him one gold piece for the room oh. and, ask, and ask if he knows of any ships which may be sailing south the next morning. I might do, he replies somewhat cagely, but information does not come free in Port Black Sand. Another gold piece, and I'll introduce you to the ship's mate. Once again, you reach into your pocket and pay the barman. Give him the money. He leads you over to one of the booths along the far wall of the tavern and points out a man with a silk scarf tied over his bald head and an ugly scar running down from his left ear to the middle of his chin. Gargo is his name. You sit okay. down next to Gargo, introduce yourself, and ask if you can buy your passage south. Ten gold pieces, and you'll have to work for your food, comes the curt reply. Gargo does not look like a man to bargain with, so you agree to his price and pay. Okay. 25 gold pieces isn't getting very far, is it? <laughs> I've got seven left, and a telescope, and some buttons. We set sail one hour after sunrise. The name of the ship is the Bella Donna, and you'll find her at the end of the jetty leading down from the tavern. I'll see you in the morning. I'm going back to the ship now, says Gargo. Okay. You decide not to get involved with any of the tavern's characters, but retire to your room. You stand up and walk towards the stairs, but a large man carrying three flasks of ale bump into you. 
spilling the drinks on the floor. Oh. Oh, wow. If you wish, you can offer to buy him more ale, or you can tell him not to be so fucking clumsy. Yeah, let's tell him to fuck off. I spent <laughs> loads of money today. <laughs> this could only end well. Yeah. He might he might admire your uh, your Moxie. gumption. <laughs> your spunk. <laughs> Moxie and gumption. <laughs> what great choice of words we did. <laughs> I'll show you who's clumsy, snarls the short-tempered man as he smashes the flasks into your face. <laughs> Loses well, them at a point. Harsh. Uh, you can fight the man, or you can save your anger for malbordus and make your way to your room. I don't. I, I can just walk away without any bath. It, that, well... I don't know. It just says you can choose to walk away. Whether there's any ensuing faff is yet to be seen. We'll find that out on 251, presumably. <laughs> there's only one thing for it. Yeah. Fight! Fight! Kick off. Here we go. Here we go. So I am. Back in Andy, England. Right. Your burly opponent is a pirate. Well practiced in swordsmanship. He draws his cutlass from its scabbard as the eager crowd forms a circle around you. Uh, pirate has a skill of nine. Stamina of 187. <laughs> and a stamina of eight. Oh, pussy. <laughs> Let's do this, dude. Let's do it. Come on, then. Boom. First roll. Uh, 18. Uh, a 20. You and your jammy... It almost makes it boring when you always roll high on your skill and I can, like, never... There's never any tension or anticipation. You just murder people left, right, and centre. Especially when I roll like that. Five, 14. 19. 19. Down to four. Let's see if any, anyone in chat... Anyone in chat want to make a roll for me while I top up the wine? Exclamation D12, please. 23. Jocelyn rolled that one. Nine. 18. I'm literally like... This, I'm like the sword dancer. The sword dancer. 19. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus 12 is 21. The pirate has been defeated. Literally just backhanded him. If you thing, win... with, with one hand, I had the sword. The other one, I'm having a fight. <laughs> one six six. I rob him now. Yeah, you do. The crowd does not stop you from yes. untying the leather pouch which is hanging from the dead pirate's neck. You leave the murmuring onlookers and climb the stairs to your room where you lock yourself in. You open the pouch and find two gold pieces and a large pearl. Whoa, this guy is poor. Nine gold He's... pieces and a pearl. Two. Two gold pieces. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had seven, so now I've got nine. Got you. Got you. You settle down to sleep and wake at dawn after a restless night. To your disgust, you are f you find that you are covered with inflamed bites from the bedbugs in your straw mattress. Ah. Uh. Wasting no more time in the inhospitable black lobster, you make your way down the jetty to the belladonna, which you see is flying the skull and crossbones. Uh -huh. It's the flag of a pirate ship. But I just murdered his first mate or something. <laughs> Walking cautiously up the gangplank, you step aboard the ship. Turn to 238. Yeah. <laughs> the whole crew just turn on you and throw you overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Walk the plank. Arr, har, har. <laughs> hey, there it is, the pirate accent. Oh, the, uh, the ads are about to go. Oh. It says ad starting soon. I've got a big yellow thing saying ad starting soon. Okay. Uh, you walk around the ship until you find Gargo. He tells you that one of his gunners was killed in the tavern last night and that you'll have to take his place. Your okay. job will be to load cannonballs during battle. You're taken below deck and shown your hammock. Soon the Belladonna sets sail and. S oh. I've turned two pages there. Basically, I'm paying to be one of his crew. Yeah, you're paying him to work for him. And you are that pleased about? that you are at last heading south. In mid-afternoon, there is a sudden shout from the crow's nest. Ship on the starboard bow! 
the, ad, the ads on. The ad is on. I ain't got no ad. Ad, ad in progress. One minute twenty two. It says. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So very hydrated. <laughs> if we get ourselves. <laughs> Justin says she believes she did recommend that you haggle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, ship on the starboard bow. The ship is suddenly bustling with the crew running about doing their duties. The captain shouts his orders and everybody runs to their battle stations. Wondering who the enemy might be, you take your place at your cannon. You hear the bad news that the enemy is a man of war and not a merchant ship. Noise suddenly erupts all around as the man of war's cannonballs smash into the Belladonna. Oh, no. The order is given to fire, but you realise that the Belladonna is no match for the battleship. In the course of the fierce battle, the Belladonna starts to sink and you fear for your life. Roll two dice. Oh, no. Luck, right? No skill. Six. So is that uh, greater than or less than your skill? It's less than your skill, isn't less it? Less than. Skill's 12, in it. Uh, it's probably a good thing, rolling under your skill, I'd have thought. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, uh, as the ship starts to sink, all the cannon crew run towards the wooden steps that lead to the upper deck. You are one of the first to reach the steps and manage to get on deck just as the ship goes underwater. Uh, if you wish to grab a piece of the masthead and drift away from the Man of War, turn to 293. If you wish to swim towards the Man of War, turn to 230. Ooh. Hmm. That is a conundrum. You could be bobbing around for days. But um, I was just in. I was just aiding the fight against it. Yeah. Maybe you could parlay. Didn't take the language skill. <laughs> I've got an idea. Let's go towards it. Go towards it. All right. 2.30. As the opposite that you would think to do. Therefore, that has got to be the best way. So you take the ship all the way to all the dragons and then you destroy them. End off. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's your fighting fantasy moon logic in action yep. right there. You swim furiously towards the man of war and wave your arms to attract attention. A rope uh, is thrown down uh, and you haul yourself onto the victor's ship. Much to your surprise, the crew is made up entirely of dwarves. Uh, the boys. captain qu questions you and other members of the sunken Belladonna's crew who have also been brought aboard. You tell the captain that you are on an important mission which started at the dwarf village of Stonebridge. The captain eyes you suspiciously, accusing you of being no more than a desperate pirate. So you say you started your quest in Stonebridge, says the captain. Uh. If that is the case, tell me who is your king. Is it Galabrin or Gillibran? It's Gillibran. <laughs> Was it Gillibran? I think so. I don't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> Gillibran, isn't it? Two, seven, eight. Gilly, yeah, Gilly Brand sounds right. The captain laughs and says, Stranger, you are telling the truth. I oh, know I, I am. <laughs> but I fear you have a lot of explaining to do. That evening over dinner, you tell the captain and his crew about your <laughs> I told mission you. and its importance. Moon logic all the day long. I've just sat down and had a dinner. <laughs> Can I eat one of my meals at the same time and go back up to. Uh, sure, why not? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Obviously concerned with the impending doom about to befall the good people of Alancia, the captain offers to sail south to the desert skulls. Huh? Two days later, the man of war drops anchor and you are rowed ashore to a white sandy beach. With your provisions restored to provide for ten meals, <laughs> yeah, baby. courtesy of the ship's cook, you wave goodbye and set off on foot. All you can see is sand and the desert landscape stretches as far as the horizon. So you can go east inland... Or you can walk along the coast. East to go inland or along the coast. It's got to be down there. So let's go along the coast. Along the coast. Have a little, you know, there might be some ice cream or something. 
Yeah, yeah. Roll your trouser legs up and all that. Get some water between your toes. Thank you on the head. It's in the corners. Yes. Absolutely. Not far down the beach, you notice a strange pattern in the sand made from hundreds of cowrie shells. In the centre of the shells, skewered into the ground, is a spear adorned with seabird feathers. Do you keep walking along the beach? Do you turn east inland? Or do you cast a reed symbol spell? Well, I believe wow. it might be my time to shine and <laughs> cast reed symbols for a stamina. Okie dokie, 94. Yeah. After casting the spell, deduct one stamina point. <laughs> you slowly begin to make sense of the patterns in the shelves. It's a warning. The next 200 metres of the beach is sacred ground, not to be walked upon by mortals. To do so would enrage the demon of the beach. Do you wish to ignore the warning and continue walking? <laughs> or will you journey east inland? <laughs> Gonna walk east. Gonna go inland. Play it safe. Yeah. Demon Jeez. of Beach. <laughs> Demon of the Beach. As you walk steadily east, you are suddenly aware of a buzzing sound overhead. You look up and see three giant wasp like insects hovering above you. Suddenly, one of the three needle flies dives down at you. Uh, have you got a magic arrow to cast? No. Nope. In which case, then, you're about to fight a giant insect with your sword. Turn to 28. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're not very strong, these guys. Uh, thrusting your sword into the air, you try to cut down the giant insect while it attempts to stab you with its long sting. Mm. Fight the needle flies mm. one at a time. Oh, it's three of them, isn't there? Yeah, the first one is five, six... The second one is six seven, and the third one is seven six. Seems okay. like creature sleep would be an option. It doesn't. Yeah, you gotta. That's... You just gotta. Just gotta go with the book, haven't you? They're not humanoid creatures, aren't they? It's very specific. Oh yeah, that's right. It was humanoid. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Okay then. Fly number one has rolled a grand total of eleven. Uh, wow. Muscular is twelve. Have it. <laughs> Uh, next is a roll of six. Ten. Eighteen. Yeah, this is. These needle flies are not going to be much of a problem for you. Nineteen. Eight. Thirteen. One down. Needle Thank fly dispatched. Needle fly number two is a little bit harder. Five, uh, 14. 17. 17. Four, five, six, seven. Let's roll. 19. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't don't even need to finish the maths. And 18. Oh, that's a dreadful roll. Uh, needle fly number two has only got one life left. Uh, if chat would like to make a roll on its behalf. Exclamation D6. I rolled a five, so 17 or more. Double. Right. Well, you need you, you need a, a double six then. <laughs> Roll a double six, chat. Jocelyn has rolled a three, a single d six. So I'll roll the second one for her. And there's the second one. Yeah, that's not not happening. Fly number two dispatched. Gosh. And the third needle fly. Oh, there's the double six. There it is. Five. Did I say it's the d six today? <laughs> <laughs> 17 uh, 12 19 Ooh, big nasty needle fly Ow Six, uh, That's not better though 10 no, 20 <laughs> Four, 16 uh, 6 7, 8 15 Close, but no cigar No cigar Oh, for 16 again. 
Oh yeah, no, I've only rolled five here. That's a dead fly. Oh, I thought it was odd, but I was following directions. Yeah, fair enough, Justin. Although we should know better than just to trust <laughs> trust me as a dungeon master. Uh, if you win, turn to one six eight. If there's no doubt. You step over the grounded needle flies and continue your trek. After half an hour's steady walking, you stumble upon a robed man lying face down in the sand. Oh, dear. Uh, he has a leather pouch clutched in his hand. You can look inside the leather pouch, or you can keep on walking. Look inside the pouch. Quick bit of grave robbery. I don't like these, because you know he's not dead, and he's going to start fighting me. But he's probably got in his pouch the mystical winning charm of fantasy fight <laughs> games you know so that's he's wearing, it. he's wearing a side say perfectly safe corpse <laughs> <laughs> 107 <laughs> okay then the pouch contains nothing except a small golden key <laughs> golden you key. slip it into your pocket and continue your trek turn to 10 <laughs> Okay. In the shimmering haze of the desert heat, you suddenly see a shape moving towards you. As it grows nearer, you see that it's somebody riding a camel. You can stop to speak to the desert rider, or you can lie low and wait until they've passed. Let's have a chat. Have a chat, 99. Though I don't have the language spell, so this could go wrong. There's a picture of the guy there. making his. Oh, yeah, seems nice. Yeah. Uh, So we're going to have a chat, 99. Do you have a dragon uh, artifact, Mr. Camel Rider? On seeing you, the desert rider draws his sword and brings his camel to a halt. You call out, saying that you do not wish to fight. You learn that he is on his way to join a merchant's caravan. You ask him if he has any water to spare, and he offers to sell you a canister, but not for money. If you can and wish to trade either a silver button or a pearl for a canister of water, you can do so. The silver got, button. You got, you I've got, got three. Both, yeah. So yeah, I'll give him one silver button. Uh, and that's it. And, and then you set off east again. <laughs> and of water. That was an exciting encounter. Turn for two, a five, big old seven. pouch full of stuff, I have to say. Two, five, seven. We just never know what you might need. Yeah. Quite unexpectedly, the wind starts to blow and the sky grows dark. The wind becomes a howling gale and whisks up the sand, making it almost impossible to see. You are stranded in the middle of a sandstorm. Lose two stamina points and test your luck. Bloody hell. Two stamina points. I'm on 15, 13. My luck ain't that great. So I've rolled a six and my luck is a seven, so I am lucky. You are lucky. Okay, one, two. Just... When the sandstorm finally dies down, you see a shining object protruding from the sand. You reach down, tug on the object, and discover that it is a brass handbell. You place it in your backpack and press on east. Brass. There's something about brass, isn't there? Yeah, I've got a brass telescope and a brass handbell. I've got two silver buttons left. It's Nine gold turn out coins. Malbordus is, is like allergic to brass. <laughs> <laughs> As the day draws on, your thirst, your thirst becomes almost unbearable. Do you possess a water canister? Yes. Yes, I do. I'll take you to 217 then. No need to read the rest of the options. Although it does look like one of them, one of them you just die. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, you take a long gulp of your delicious water, savouring mm. the brief moment when your mouth does not feel as dry as the desert around you. Delicious water. The afternoon sun continues to beat down relentlessly, its intensity causing shimmering waves of heat to rise from the parched sand. You resist the temptation to finish off the water and press on. Turn to 303. Can I take some uh, meals whilst I'm uh, wandering around, please? You can. Uh, I need to also briefly excuse myself for a short break. Okay. 
I'm going to take two meals, go to eight, get back up to 18. All right, but because we're on automated ads, I'm just going to leave you sitting there entertaining the audience. Okay. Well, this is fun. Let's do a little recap so far of what I've got in my bag. I've got nine gold pieces, and I've got a golden key. I've got a brass telescope. I've got two silver buttons left. I've also got a pearl. Uh, I've got a brass handbell. Uh, I've got. Oh, I can't even read that right in. Hopefully, I can remember that. Uh, we also have the spells open door, creature sleep, read symbols, and light. So, we're doing all well so far. Eight meals left. Oh, and a can of water. Well, half drunk a can of water, but still a can of water nonetheless. Five gold part. Pieces to be a pirate seems steep. It was it was ten. Ten gold pieces to be a pirate, but a very short period of time before they got blown out of the water. It was uh, a redonkulous, absolutely redonkulous. Uh, but there you go. It was five five gold pieces for the first trip and then ten for the second. And I got robbed a gold piece. Unbelievable. I do well, yeah, but no one's no one's asked for gold anymore. I'm feeling I don't really need gold in this bit because I'm going to be traipsing through the desert looking for uh, pieces of dragon. Although it did say that there was five dragon artifacts, that's quite a lot of things to hunt down and try and destroy. I have returned. Hello. I feel like there should be more gold. Five gold pieces to be a pirate seems steep. <laughs> Need to haggle more. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm playing catch up. Right, let's go. All right, then, 3.03. Half an hour later, you see a low brown tent, which you recognise as the type used by desert nomads. A horse is tethered to one of the tent pegs. Uh, you can make contact with the nomad, or you can head south and just avoid him. No, oh, so far, so good. Let's go and have a chat. Have a chat, 196. All right, Nomad in his tent. Nomad in Ooh. tent. One second, left the door open. I'm cold now. Uh-oh. There you go. It was a bit of a breeze. It was getting a bit of a breeze. Oh. Uh, you are no more than 10 metres away from the tent when suddenly the flap is thrown back by a fat-bearded man in a yellow robe. His Hello, fingers Batman. adorned with ornate gold rings. He does not attempt to threaten you, but beckons you inside, saying, Stranger... Oh, you look in need of rest. Please accept my hospitality. May I even tempt you to buy some of my exotic wares? Sensing no apparent danger, you step inside his tent and squat down on top of a rug. Shit place and... for a shop, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was say, yeah. The, the footfall's probably not, <laughs> not great. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -da -da. The nomad, his name is Abdul. Abdul. Um, now, what will you buy, my friend? He goes into great raptures about all the goods he has to sell, uh, which you learn are the following. He's got some sealing wax for two gold pieces. He's got an onyx egg for three gold pieces. Ooh. He has an ivory beetle charm for two. A bracelet of mermaid scales for three. <laughs> really? Mm. A silver mirror for four. A crystal key for three. An ebony face mask for three. And a bone flute for two. If you can and wish to buy any of Abdul's goods, make the necessary adjustments on your adventure sheet. Ooh, right. Let's think about this. Crystal key. Usually collecting keys is a good idea, but I have got open door, which is a magic thing that will open any door. Jaxley said so. Um, an onyx egg. An ivory beetle, sealing wax. That seems quite specific. Um, how much for the sealing wax? Uh, two gold pieces. Two gold. Uh, how much for the ebony face mask? Three. Uh, 
And what about the bone flute? Two. They got nine left. What was the egg? Three. What's the what's the chances that Onyx egg is one of the dragon artifacts? Probably quite high. <laughs> uh, we can't rule it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it is not a rule outable thing. I'm gonna get my little fancy hero walking on the books. Uh, let's go. I'm going to go for the wax, not the flute, because I've got a creature sleep, which I reckon, I bet the flute puts a creature to sleep, and I've got a spell for that. I'm going to go for the sealing wax, and the mirror might be something to do with lighting things up. Um, so, or maybe fire. <clears throat> right, sealing wax for two. And the uh, mirror, or however much that was. Uh, four, the mirror. Oh, yeah, that's definitely it then. So four, five, six. With three gold pieces left. Sealing wax is too specific to not be something, and the mirror might help me caught. <laughs> it might be a little fail safe in case you didn't take the fire spell. So that's my thinking. That's okay, done. No. Thank you, that's Fat done. Man. Deal done. Yeah, Abdul tells you that he thinks Vatos lies in the southern part of the Desert of Skulls, and you decide to take his advice. Thanking him for his help, you set off sail to the south. Set off sail? Set off sail. Uh, three, oh. eight, nine. Oh, it is one of the books where it's not really telling you where to go, is it? I haven't got any choices of the de decisions as opposed to directions. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's not like one of those, you take the left or the right, alleyway, whatever. Uh, not long after the tent is out of sight, you begin to feel a slight, slight tremor in the ground beneath your feet. Suddenly, the sand starts to shift before you. It rises into the air and then falls down in a great cascade to expose the long body of a huge sandworm. You realise with horror that it is about to engulf you with its spiked oval mouth. It's at least 20 metres long and you must fight it. You ready for this? And, um, yep. Skill 10. Stamina 20. <laughs> right then. First roll. Oh, Snake Eyes for me. That's 12. Oh, nice. Strong Eight. start. 20. 20. Uh, 12. Takes the sandworm down to 18. Chop. That, on the other hand, is a good roll. 19. 8. 8 plus 12. Is... 20. 20. <laughs> uh, 8. 18 this time for me. Seven, nineteen. All right. What we got now? Six, eighteen, seventeen. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Twenty. Oof. Uh, Twenty-one. Uh, exclamation D twelve. If anyone in chat wants to have a go, roll for, on behalf of the sandworm. 19. Roll that dice. Oh, it's a 21. Oh, wow. <laughs> this thing is Big strong. rolls from the sandworm. Oof. Net, five, Oof. six, seven, nine, eight, 19. 20. Oof. Just. Right, halfway there. Come on. Halfway there. Skilly McSkillison. Uh-oh. 20. 15. Oof. How much stamina you got left? 12. 5, 9, Five. 19. 5 plus 12 is 17. 
10. Same stamina each. That's better. Oh, Plenty snake eyes again. Plenty to, that's, uh, back in the game. Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. <laughs> and eight. I'm going to be eating meals all afternoon. Eighteen. Sixteen. Sandworms down to six. Over to chat again for another roll. Exclamation D12, please, folks. Twenty. Twenty. So you need an eleven or more. Nope, four. That's fourteen for the sandworm. Sixteen. Twenty-one. All right. Last, last roll. Hacking at it now. Five, seven, nineteen. Seventeen. Oof. You have defeated the sandworm. Turn to eighteen. And takes opportunity to have a couple of meals. Bring myself <laughs> to sixteen. <clears throat> you chip off one of the sandworm's teeth, which may be yeah. useful as a weapon. Oh wow, some more things. Sand. You, you took it into your belt and continue south. You walk steadily on until the sun sinks below the western horizon. Under the cloudless sky, the desert quickly becomes very cold. Did you learn the fire spell? You didn't, did you? Ah, uh, what a mirror, though. <laughs> Three nine five. Well, your hair all looks smart when you die. <laughs> <laughs> it is so cold that you are hardly able to sleep at all. Lose three stamina points. A bit like I ate that food. You are wide awake and thankful when the dawn sun rises over the horizon to heat up the desert air. As soon as it is light enough to see where you are walking, you continue your trek to the south. Three stamina points. That's steep just because it's cold and I couldn't sleep. Yeah. She didn't die. We've, we've, we've done books before and it's gone. Yeah. You were so cold, <laughs> you, you died. Dead. <laughs> the desert quickly heats up and you are soon toiling under the white sun. Not far to the west, you see what looks like a cluster of trees with large birds circling above them. If you wish to walk over to the trees, turn to 142. If you prefer to keep walking, turn to 39. Let's check these trees out. Check the trees out, 142. Birds circling, carrion birds presumably, would indicate some sort of carcass. <clears throat> As you get close, you see that the trees surround a pool of water. You have found an oasis. Oasis. If you wish to drink the water, turn to 337. If you wish to continue south without drinking, turn to 207. Oh, now is he? Is is a thought. It's bird circling. Is it because people drink it and they die? And the die, yeah, the water's skanky. Okay, Jocelyn, take it easy. See you again. Do you know, but it could give me healing powers. Let's have a drink. Go on. Oof. Uh... Three, three, seven. I might find sure? like a magic ring or something at the bottom of the lake. Yeah. I've got a can of water that I've just ignored. <laughs> if dead. the birds had been any lower in the sky, you would have recognised them as vultures. Waiting for another victim to fall dead by the side of the poisoned waterhole. Oh, they we knew they it. They circle watchfully in the sky. Once again, their patience... Has been rewarded. <laughs> take seat, back seat, take seat, back seat. All right, what time are we on? We're on quarter past ten. Just bear in mind, when I get the text, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've forgotten what number we were on. What number were we on before? Taxi, taxis. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, that's a, uh, what, what number was the watering hole? 18. Do you know what? I usually keep my finger in the thing as well. Uh, uh, no, 18 was when you got too cold, and that took us to 395. Come on, you knew it. Yeah, he did know that. You're right. Uh, <clears throat> it's so hard with this, these books, 17. though. Yeah, there's definitely I... been times where... Um... So you walked over to the trees. Sorry, I'm just retracing our steps. 
It's like, uh, you know, but on the same respect, I could have, it could have been poisoned and I could have taken like two stamina, but because I drank the water, um, I managed to poop some kind of mystic protection <laughs> magic, against dragon bites or something. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, I've retraced our steps. Uh, so you've carried on. You've walked, You've not drunk the water, you've just gone sack it and moved on. Ah, my God, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, you suddenly Please, stumble sir. across a large pile of rocks, partly hidden by the wind-blown sand. Rocks. Rocks. Do you inspect the rocks, or do you walk past them? Let's inspect the rocks. Okay, three, seven, five. You get hit and you die. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look. As you pull away the rock, a scorpion runs out from the shadows of its dark crevices and stings you on the back of the hand. Oh, for fuck's sake. Lose four stamina points. Four? <laughs> yeah. This is like that one. What was the one that uh, where I was playing the character and we just it was just relentless. <laughs> just <sighs> relentless like turn left. There's spikes in the ceiling. You cut your head open. Uh you crush the scorpion under your boot and carry on pulling away the rocks. In the middle of the rocks you find a small white cotton sack which is tied around a spherical object. Do you untie the sack or do you leave it tied to the rocks and carry on south? No, we're opening that sack. Yeah, let's open the sack. Three, four, nine. Incidentally, all the carry on souths have all been turned to 39. So there's one route out of this desert. Right. <laughs> Three, four, nine. After untying the cord, you slowly pull open the cotton sack. Inside, you find a glass ball. Uh, in which a tiny man with pointed ears and wings wearing a pea green costume is jumping up and down in a joyous frenzy. You cannot hear his voice through the glass, but you realise that the sprite wants to escape. Do you release the sprite? Or do you leave the sprite in his glass prison and continue south by turning to 39? <laughs> I mean, the sprite might be so grateful. Yeah, but there's a reason he's in that glass ball. So he could be mischievous and naughty. Let's, let's let him out anyway. Let him out. Two, three, four. And he's feeling adventurous today. You tap the glass ball on one of the rocks and watch it break open like an egg. The tiny sprite flies out, rejoicing at the top of his almost inaudible okay. high-pitched <laughs> voice. He thanks you over and over again for releasing him from the entrapment spell. He sprinkles some sparkling dust on your head and says it will bring you good fortune. Add a luck point. He also advises you to make a headscarf out of the sack and cord to keep the sun off your head, as it's still a long way to Vatos. As you begin to tear open the sack, the sprite waves and flies away. With your head and neck now protected, you stride off south. Turn to 39. <laughs> I, I'm going to eat some more meals now because that was quite a horrific turn of events. An so arduous more, two more meals. An arduous journey across the desert. That goes to seventy. There we go. Right. Back in the game. Back in the game. Long before noon, you are desperately thirsty. If you possess the water canister, turn to sixty three. Oh, that was the greatest purchase of uh, a silver button I've ever had in my life. Yes, I do have a water <laughs> I do have the gas canister. <laughs> you pour all of the precious water into your mouth and gulp it down swiftly. Nice However, long, you're now staring into an empty canister and you regret your action. You have no choice but to carry on, but you feel refreshed. So that's it, end of the water now. 116. I need to find some more water. Uh, <clears throat> the sun's relentless heat beats down on you, but there is nowhere on the desolated lands desolate landscape to offer you shade. If you're wearing the headscarf, turn to 289. I'm wearing my beautiful headscarf. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks to Mr. Sprite and his fashion advice. <clears throat> Although the heat is insufferable, your headscarf protects you from the sunstroke and you press on resolutely. Turn to 164. See, I bet I would have died sunstroke. Staring into the shimmering haze, you see a high stone wall less than half a kilometre away. Various stone towers and roofs inside the wall protrude above it. 
As you get closer, you see that wind-blown sand has drifted high against the wall and no trail or track leads to an entrance gate. Vatos! A voice inside you shouts. If you wish to try and open a wooden side door next to the entrance gate, it turns 382. Uh, or you can cast a jump spell, which you can't. So oh, I can't. It's 382. 382. 382. Uh, 381. 382. The door is firmly shut and will not open. If you wish to cast an open door spell. Hell yeah. <laughs> turn to 248. Right, two, four, eight. It is. What's, what's the stamina on that? I've got so much stuff in my backpack. Of, uh, that's one, uh, one point. I wrote it down before. It's yeah, going to tell it. us, I think. Uh, you whisper the words of the open door spell with your parched mouth. The door swings slowly inwards. Deduct two stamina points for casting the spell. Oh, sorry, fifteen. You step through and find yourself in the middle of a deserted square. Turn to one hundred and eleven. I feel like some pixie jizz might be thrown my way in a minute. Okay, then. Looking around, you see no sign of life. On the opposite side of the square, there is a large stone archway. It seems as good a place as any to start your search for the dragon artifacts. You walk through the arch to a stone stairway which descends into a torch-lit corridor below. As you walk warily down the stone steps, you wonder where Malt... Malborderous might be. Hang on, is this right? Have I turned us to the right number? Stone archway, three eight two. That's what I feel like I've turned us to the wrong number. Open door spell two four eight. I was distracted because Joe's just texted me. They're leaving town now. Yeah, it's all right. By the time they get the train and that, we've probably got at least another half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, Whisper the words, open door spell, deserted square, turn to 111. No, it is the right one. It just doesn't seem right. Um, <clears throat> at the bottom of the steps, you see an iron casket. Do you wish to open the casket or do you walk south along the corridor? Looking for dragon bits. I think you're going to have to open the, open the iron casket. Yeah, okay. Then 287. Open that door. Open that door. You prize open the chest and find a polished iron helmet inside. You can put the helmet on your head or leave it and walk south along the corridor. Oh, why would I not put it on my head? Because it's probably going to kill me. Let's put it on. <laughs> 97. The helmet has been made by a skilled ironsmith. It will afford you greater protection. Add a skill point. Intent, intent on finding the first dragon artifact, you walk south along the corridor, turn to 140. As you walk down the corridor, you suddenly feel a light tap on your shoulder. You spin around and see a horrifying creature with ragged clothes on its thin body. Its hollow eyes and mouth are filled with thick slime, which makes its voice gurgle as it whispers the words, Death, in your ear. This messenger of death then disappears, but somehow you know what has happened. The messenger of death is a sadistic killer who plays games with its victims. Staying ahead of you, it will place each letter of the word death in various locations. Should you come across and read all of the letters of the word, the messenger of death will reappear to revel in the sight of your life draining away. Malbordus's assassins has given you your search for artifacts an unwanted twist. Turn to 330. Death. All right. The corridor ends at a T-junction. Pattern drapes hang down from the ceiling to the floor on the far wall. Will you dun dun dun? <laughs> Will you pull back the drapes, turn left along the corridor, or turn right along the corridor? Pull back the drapes. Pull back the drapes. One seventy. There you see in blood red letters the <laughs> D. Letter D. <laughs> A T and H. You are dead. 
Uh, you boldly throw back the drapes, half expecting a sign of death to be revealed. But there's merely a plain iron door, which, when you turn the handle, turns out to be unlocked. Do you open the door, or go left on the corridor, or right on the corridor? Open the door. Open the door. Always open the door. 365. You enter a dust-filled room which has dried blood smeared all over its walls. There is a bucket hanging down from the ceiling on a rope just above your head. In the wall opposite, there is another door, and in the wall to the left there is a low arch from which you can hear the sound of scratching. A huge black insect's head suddenly appears out of the dark hole, followed by a long and many-legged body. The giant centipede rushes from its lair to bite you. You've got a fight. Aye, 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 aye. The centipede's not too bad, though. Nine, seven. Let's do this. Let's get into it. Roll number one. 19. That's nice. 22. Roll number two. Uh, just 14 for me. 9 plus 13 is 22. Roll number 3. Uh, 20. 9 again. 22. Okay. Uh, roll number 4. 5, 6, 7, 8 is 17 for me. 16 for me. Whoa! The said speed gets one up on you. Overconfidence. Six, F Fifteen now. Twenty-three. I got annoyed. I spanked him. There you go. Oh. Right, one one dead centipede. Three nine three. Please let that be the first dragon thing. Uh, okay. If you wish to cut down the bucket from the ceiling, turn to sixty, or you can open the iron door on the far wall. Uh, bucket, please. Bucket. Turn to sixty. That's where I'd hide. That's where I would hide a dragon artifact. In a bucket guarded by a giant centipede. Yeah. The bucket clatters to the stone floor when the rope is cut, spilling its contents, old bones, all around the room. Uh, gathering them all together, you discover that one of them has been carved into the shape of a dragon. <gasps> bum, 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 bum. This is one of the artifacts you have been seeking. Yeah, you baby. put the carved bone in your pocket and walk over to the door in the far wall. Turn to 21. What? Well, I, thought, <laughs> I thought I was destroying them, not keeping them. I don't know. You put it in your pocket. You, maybe you need to destroy them altogether or something. Maybe I've got, got delusions of grandeur. Maybe I'm going to be the uh, ultimate uh, evil. I make maybe. a nice list. Just give me two sets to top me wide up. This is one of the artifacts you have been seeking. No, it wasn't in all caps. That was just uh, uh, my elaboration there. That was my dramatic delivery. I'm sorry to report. Delivery. Right, through the door. I'm going through the right. door. I'm not going left, right. I'm going right through the door. I've got no choices. The door opens into a corridor at a T-junction. One passageway runs to the left and right of the door, and another begins immediately in front of you. You see nothing of interest either to your left or right, so you decide to walk directly ahead. Turns 46. Yeah, no choice. Don't give me choices. No choice. Kind of turned into a more traditional dungeon crawler now, isn't it? Yeah, I know, right? After what, an hour and a half's worth of creeps and through a desert. After walking for some 50 metres, you prog your progress is halted by a deep pit which spans the width of the corridor. Do you have a jump spell? No. You do not, in which case you are forced to jump the pit without magical aid. Turn to 259. You jump. stand back and take twice. a running jump. Roll two dice. Five, six, seven, eight. Is it? Is that's less than your skill, isn't it? Same as my skill. Turn to one four four. Is it equal or lower? Equal or, or lower? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it says same or less, same and less than. Ooh. One four four. You seem to hang in the air for ages, but eventually land on the ground beyond the pit. You waste no time and continue straight on. Turn to 152. Pit. Oh. 
Or in the gloom things. of the torch-lit corridor, you see a horrible creature hovering in the air and blocking your path. It is round with a large eye in the centre of its dark green scaly skin, which is covered with spines. The eye stinger floats towards you, trying to mesmerise you with its hypnotic gaze and sting you with its spines. Uh, you can fight it with your sword, or you can look through your backpack for something to use. Let's look through my backpack. I've got a mirror. 387. Oh, yeah, yeah. Silver mirror. Good shout. Knew it. Make its its bigger strength its main weakness. I like your thinking. Three eight seven. I've got a telescope. Uh, here we go. Looking for the for a likely object to defeat the ice thing. It you make a quick. You must make a quick decision. Will you take the mirror, a pearl, an onyx egg, or none of these? Uh, the the mirror. The mirror sixty five. Mirror. Well, you you have got a pearl still out as well, haven't you? I do, but I'm not sure what use that's going to be. I don't know. Maybe it likes eating pearls. The re reflection of its own gaze does not affect the eye stinger and it bears down on you. You drop the mirror on the floor and hear it shatter as you hurry oh, to draw your sword. Wanker. Lose a luck point and turn to 236. Why would the mirror not <laughs> oh, work? Oh, come on. 236, should have given it a pearl. I know, right? Give it a pearl necklace. Uh, okay, trying desperately to avoid the ice stinger's gaze, you cut blindly through the air with your sword. Test your luck. Let's just got rid of one of my luck points. I'm not lucky at all. I've got 11 out of 7. Right. 299. I'm dead. Stupid book. The ice stinger floats over your thrusting sword and brushes your face with its deadly spines. All of your muscles suddenly tighten as its petrifying poison races through your veins. Later that day, the serpent guards will take you away to join the other gargoyles on top of the city walls. Your adventure ends here. Right. There, what, there, can we see, like, let's not, not take see back see, but can we just see if, if the pearl, the random fucking pearl would have done anything or if it was just a, a massive load of bollocks? Uh, yeah, although, again, I've forgotten the numbers. That's so annoying. 319 for the pearl. What other options were there? Pearl, mirror, or... The onyx egg. Onyx egg. I didn't buy that. Uh, you toss the pearl at the large eye of the vile creature, but it merely bounces off and falls down, cracking the stone floor. Yeah, it takes you to 236 again. It's, the te it's test your luck one way or another. Literally the luck test. Yeah. This is wow. one. Uh, the onyx egg, however, would have stopped yeah. doing its tracks. Wouldn't as soon it? as you reveal the onyx egg, the eye stinger becomes motionless and closes its central eye. It doesn't like the onyx egg. Who'd have thought? <laughs> oh, there's just nothing in the world would make you try and logic that one together. Yeah, like the mirror. Yeah, I can see some logic in what you're trying to do there. Even the pearl, because you think like, oh, just sling it into the eye, jab the eye out or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the onyx egg. That's, that's the onyx egg. I nearly bought that egg as well. I did think yeah. about it, but I thought, no. Why would I buy an egg? <laughs> What's well, one man crowd saying? Oh, come on, bad ending. What though? That's terrible. Yeah, that is. That's um, that's a bit out. That's a bit out there, even for the fighting fantasy books. Uh, uh, we're not. We're not going to take you back to you on that point though, because I've had the uh, text from my wife saying that they are on the way home. Um, I, I felt like we were doing good guns there for a minute, like it was yeah. going all right, and we were cracking on, and then, and then just out the blue, I stinger. Ice stinger, yeah. Unlucky switch. Well, you might have been lucky with your sword swings as well. I suppose that would have gone in a different direction. Yeah. Wonder, but yeah, Did that, that is the luck test. That's a um, that's a rough one to throw out there, isn't it? Can't even fight it. I suppose yeah, luck. But I mean, the the and literally the. 
you have just lost the luck by it turning up. Disappointment. No wonder they didn't reprint this one. Dog shit. Yeah. 